Hey everyone, Michael here. So in this video, we're gonna walk through the management section of the company report, and I'll explain some of the metrics that we check and why we check them, and how to interpret the tables and charts that we have here. Now, before we start, you may be wondering why the management section and the ownership section for that matter don't contribute to the uh, snowflake that we have here for each company. And the reason being is because these five areas, being value, dividend, health, past and future, they all focus primarily on financial metrics and financial data, whereas management and ownership, while they do have some metrics, uh, like financial metrics like company earnings and specific shareholder ownership, um, they're much more qualitative aspects of analysis, so that's why they don't contribute to the snowflake. And so why have we chosen to include an analysis section on management? Well, it's a very important aspect to look at. So if you don't assess management, it's hard to know if the people controlling the company are going to act in your best interest, right? So what we do here is we wanna see how experienced the management teams are and how aligned they are with shareholders. So in terms of experience, we wanna see what their tenure is, how long they've been at the company or what prior experience they had at previous businesses. And in terms of alignment, we want to see what their ownership is like, like how much skin in the game do they have, how much how much of the company do they own, um, how much stock do they own, um, and if they're being compensated in a way that's aligned with shareholders and uh, al aligned with company performance, or if it's, you know, like they're getting compensated very well, regardless of company performance. So that's what we're kind of trying to assess here to share with you um, the experience of the team and also how aligned they are. So this first section we have here, we basically talk to you most, or we share the experience and tenure and um, compensation of the CEO. So first up, we share the average tenure of the whole management team in general, and here we can see it's 6.2 years. So we wanna show you this first up to basically share an insight as to whether there's a high turnover or not at the company. If there's something like less than one year uh, average management tenure, then that tells you that there's actually very high turnover of staff and that it's quite concerning that people aren't staying there that long. So there might be some sort of internal uh, troubles going on that are making people join and leave so quickly. But if you see anything more than a couple of years, so in this case 6.2 years, that's a great sign, right? That shows you that this management team is um, being employed and staying there for quite a long period of time. So great to see that they not only like have long-term um, uh, experience of the business, but it's like they're actually staying in the roles for quite a long time. So as I mentioned, the first part we check is regards to the, in, in regards to the CEO. And so what we have here is we show you their personal tenure in that particular role as CEO. And in this case, we can see this, this CEO has been there for 7.75 years. And we also show you their compensation. And more importantly, we actually show you their whole experience, which is what I was saying before. So you get to know their whole history, where they have been before, um, what experience they have in terms of other businesses and um different projects they've worked on. So this can help get you an understanding of the context of where this person has been and what kind of uh, skills they bring to the table. So we show you that just so you can get an insight on actually who the chief operating, chief executive officer is and what kind of uh, person they are. So the next part we show is the CEO compensation analysis. And basically the reason we do this is like I mentioned, we wanna know that the CEO is being compensated in a way that is aligned with shareholders' best interests and also aligned with company performance. And so the two checks we do here is actually we see if the compensation is like fair relative to the market compensation for companies of a similar size and also if the compensation is fair to how the company's earnings have been trending. So this first check here, compensation versus the market, we compare the CEO's total compensation, which includes salary and any bonuses, which can be stuff like stock options and cash bonuses and stuff. Um, we compare this that total compensation to the compensation for CEOs of companies that are in a similar bracket to that. And so um, companies that are in a similar bracket to this business um, are typically paid around $10 million. And now this is an example where Microsoft is a huge business. It's like, I think at the moment, the biggest in the world. So the businesses in the next smallest bracket would actually be only like a couple of hundred billion dollars. So they're actually much, much smaller. So the average compensation there is smaller. So in this case, the compensation the for the business, sorry, for the CEO is much higher given it's a much bigger business. Uh, but we can see here that basically in comparison to companies that are a similar size, the CEO is paid generously in comparison. So the, the business fails that check. If it was to pass that check, it basically means that the business of uh, the CEO isn't getting paid the average, like they're getting paid at or below the average compensation. So it's pretty fair for, for the size of the business, the compensation is pretty fair. And so the next thing we check is the compensation versus earnings. So this is basically sharing with us 
how uh, the CEO is compensated in regards to company performance. And so we have here this dotted yellow line you can see here is the company's uh, earnings. And this is the total amount, not the earnings per share, it's the dollar amount of net income. So we can see here that as earnings have actually trended from down here up, up and to the right, that his total compensation has actually trended up and to the right as well. And so it seems that, according to this check, that his compensation has been consistent with company performance over the past year. So this checks only these um, for the past trailing 12 months, but it's important just to have a look at how long this person's tenure actually has been and uh, how their history, uh, historical compensation has been trending as well. So in this case, it looks like a good sign. What you want to keep an eye out for, though, is if someone is being compensated incredibly generously and it's not in alignment with company earnings. So say, for example, the um, compensation was up high here the whole time and the earnings were either flat or they were trending down. Um, that would be something to look out for because that means this CEO is getting paid very handsomely regardless of how the company is performing. <clears throat> if the company is performing poorly, us as shareholders are suffering, but this CEO is getting paid regardless. So that's something you want to keep an eye out for. And this com a company would fail that check if that was the case. So, so we share that with you there, and that's, that's very important to um, keep in mind. So next part we check is the leadership team. Now, we basically just talk about experience here, but there's a lot to learn in this table. So you can have a look at the whole leadership team here and everyone from their, uh, everyone's names and their position, their tenure, compensation, and their ownership of the stock. And now one thing to keep in mind is that this ownership refers to their personal holdings, i.e. if there's any holdings in their individual name. So it doesn't track if they have any entities in like company or trust names because it's, it's very difficult to have... Um, access to that sort of data. So this is if any shares in their personal name. They may have more outside in a different entity, but this is in regards to their personal ownership. So what you do here is basically have a look at each individual because you want to know all these people who are in the management team, you want to get to know them and see their sort of experience like I mentioned before. So this is a CEO and we saw above this person's profile, but this is what you can do for every single um, person on the management team. So you can see their position, their tenure, their age, their compensation and their, how much of the company they own. And then you also get a bit of their profile to learn what their history is. And you can do this for every single member and this gives you a really great uh, understanding and context for the people who are actually running the business. And it's very useful to look through every single one and get an idea of their history. The next part to look at is their tenure. So knowing what position they're in, it's important to see their tenure. And one thing to keep in mind is that this tenure actually refers to their tenure in that position not their tenure at the company. So this person may have been here for 7.75 years in this role, but they may have been in the business before that. So this is just regards to the current role they're in. And it's important to try to see like how long they've been in that role. Um, if there's someone only new, then it's just worth looking into like where they've been previously. Uh, and like I mentioned in the profile, you want to get a look and see like if the person's been in the business in a different role, and this is like they've only just started the role, or if they've come from an external company and they've just joined. Um, because that could be a sign that like someone's not that experienced within the business, but they're like a new a new hire. Um, alternatively, you've got someone who's got like years of experience in the business and has just started a new role after a promotion or something. So that's something to look in here, uh, comparing the tenure to their profile and seeing where they've been before. Um, and that's very helpful, like I said, to get a context for everyone's experience. The next part is their compensation. So when data is provided, um, we have compensation figures to show you how much they're um, earning. And ultimately, this is important to try and get an idea of uh, what their what their role is, and also how they're compensated in in um, comparison to their peers in in the management team. And ultimately, you want to try and keep an eye out for if there's like any significant sort of compensation for some people and not for others, um, and just if there's any sort of disparity. So you just kind of want to look for a general trend of like, is everyone sort of compensated in a fair manner, or is there some sort of compensation packages that seem huge for some and not for others? So. Keep an eye out for that when you can see it. And the last part to check here is the ownership data. And like I mentioned, it's for their personal holdings. It's for their holdings in their personal name. And what you want to look for here is basically how much skin in the game do these people have. And so it's up to you to use your judgment on basically how big the company is and how much they own in their personal name. So in this case, you may think, oh, the person only owns 0.021% of the company. That's not very much. And then you look at it and the fact that this company is so huge, the person has $534 million worth in their own name. You're like, okay, that's a very, very, very big exposure. This person, from, from my interpretation, seems very aligned because 
it is in their best interest, like almost half a billion dollars worth of best interest, it's in their best interest to make decisions that are aligned with shareholders because they are such a big shareholder themselves. Um, same thing with these next few people, 197, 125 million, like that to me is a lot of money and so, uh, it should be for most people. So it is in their best interest to make decisions that are um, very value accretive for shareholders. And so that gives me a sense of reassurance that this management team does have skin in the game. They're aligned with me if I become a shareholder and um, they, they'll make decisions that are good. And you just have, basically, when you're looking at this ownership section, just try and get that idea for every single member. So when data is provided, have a look at those who have got data um, supplied and basically, okay, 66 million, 36, 24.8, like these are not small numbers, so they do actually have a fair bit of skin in the game. What you want to keep an eye out for is like, if there's a business where um, it's the low ownership, like I mentioned, 0.21%, and there's actually a small dollar amount as well. So if there's only like, like less than a million dollars, um, then that's something to keep an eye out for because it's like that's not that much ownership um, from like management themselves. So in that case, they don't have that much skin in the game. They're not that aligned with shareholders. So it's something to keep an eye out for. Um, and that's that's how you analyze this section. And the check we do here is basically just how experienced are they? So in this case, the company's uh, management team has a very long tenure of like 6.2 years on average. Um, and so anything above five years is considered very experienced. Um, and that's great to see, like I mentioned, low turnover and they've got a lot of um, time and experience in the business. The next check is the exact same thing but for the board members. So while the management team focuses on like the running of the operations of the business, the board members are at a level above that where they focus on like the policies and, the, and high level company decisions. Um, and basically the management team reports to the board members or the CEO reports to the board members. So here you can have the same sort of analysis of why I just mentioned above. Have a look at everyone's profile, have a look at their positions, have a look at their tenure and where they've been before, have a look at their compensation and see if it's roughly fair for like board members of a company of that size. Um, because like a board member of a company this big, like 2.5 trillion, it makes sense that they get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars because it's such a big business. Uh, but what you want to keep an eye out for is like, um, if there's a small, like much, much, much smaller business and they're still compensated very heavily, that's something that's kind of concerning that you should keep an eye out for. Uh, but just, just you can use your own judgment where you look at the size of the business and the amount they're being compensated and if it seems fair or not. And if there's any particular ones that have like incredibly high compensation versus others. And like I mentioned, the last bit too is also ownership. So ultimately you want board members that are aligned with you and they do have skin in the game. And in this case, we can see here that they all do have at least a couple of million dollars invested, 1.3, 1.8. Um, they've got millions of dollars worth invested in the stock, so it is in their best interest to make decisions that are aligned with shareholders and are like value accretive. So in this in this sense, that's good. And like I mentioned, the opposite is keep an eye out for if there's not much skin in the game because that, that could be a bit concerning. And the same sort of check here is we want to show you if the board members are, are experienced or not and if they have like a pretty long tenure. So it's 4.4 years, not as much as the management team, but it's still good to see that they have a couple of years in their belt. Um, the board of directors do have... Uh, enough time there and we consider anything over three years to be experienced. So that's pretty much the management section and as I mentioned this, this should support your analysis that you do in the uh, previous sections being future value past and financial health and stuff. So when you're looking at these uh, sections just keep an eye out for like how aligned management is because ultimately when you when you see how aligned they are that can help you understand that they are in the in um, the game with you <laughs> and uh, also looking at their profiles can give you an idea of okay this is their experience and I believe that and you look at it and try and decipher whether you're not I believe that they're going to make the right decisions in the future um, based on their past performance and like previous experience so yeah that's how you can uh, review the management section of the company report thank you so much for watching